Well, space fans, exciting news, huh? And there's even more in part two. Sorry for the loss of Parker, Gary. It was an honor to have met you last year and consider you a dude, not a hero, and white too. Well, I mean, I am what I am. But uh, thank you, Kung Fu Hot Dog, for five British pounds. It was great meeting you. Just a dude. Just a dude. Well, I'm most sorry for being late for my video today, but I had to have some words with my nutritionist before this whole video started because, let's face it, when I'm talking to her about my dietary requirements, it takes an awfully long time to get through. Everywhere I look, something reminds me of her. Gonna have fun in this city. Do, 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 do. Be with my girl, she's got titties. Do, 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 do. She's at a side to me. So two nights ago, I was absolutely outraged about Stella Blade being all of a sudden censored. Like on Monday or Tuesday, I posted a video celebrating the fact it was going to be uncensored. Well, talk about a knee-jerk reaction, ladies and gentlemen. In fact, my knee-jerk reaction yesterday was to actually return my god-awful PlayStation 5 and everything else, even my HD capture card from Elgato, that thing is problematic. In fact, what I want to do in future, and some of you can actually tell me if I'm correct about this, but if I have a secondary monitor and I don't use a capture card and I've got OBS, I can still capture game footage from monitor number one. Am I correct? Because if that's the more simple solution, that's what I'm going to go along with but no, somebody on twitter said to me i was looking forward to you reviewing stellar blade well for you sir or madam i'm still going to do that it just won't be a live stream not at the moment but what i want to do later on is that when stellar blade actually does come to pc i'll definitely do a pc or a pc game through for you guys and girls because i certainly owe it to you and i owe it to me uh, but i will do a review next week so so yeah, don't worry about that. I think what I'm going to do now, I mean, I'm going around in circles today. I'm, I'm, I really am a purple haze of an absolute mess. So what I might do is just to go over to CEX today or tomorrow and pick up a secondhand copy of the PlayStation 5. I know it's just weird. I do want to review this game, but like I said, I'm have to get secondary monitors and do all these bits of nonsense. It's just kind of crazy. But on today's video, ladies and gentlemen, I won't just be talking about Stellar Blade. It's got even more controversy attached to it now more backfires but sweet baby inca coming into the fray once again in fact i mentioned the story briefly on my angry video rant two nights ago but i removed it but i'm going to save it for today and is space marines 2 actually going to be a gay video game well stick around and find out it's friday titty time <laughs> So what did you think of her? Of who? The woman in the red dress. I designed her. She, um, well, she doesn't talk very much, but, but if you'd like to meet her, to deny our own impulses is to deny the very thing that makes us human. Megatron must be stopped, no matter the cost. Works for me. I wear sunglasses at night. So I can, so I can track the visions in my mind. There's someone behind me, isn't there? No! You've been doing the same oh, job for 10 years! What's that? We're the hell's breaking loose! You'll be right in the eye of the storm! Now the thing is, my reaction two nights ago was a knee-jerk one, and yes, when Sony has asked Shift Up to put in their patch 
to get rid of the offensive hard R graffiti, which, again, I've got to come out with a conspiracy theory here, folks. If I was one of those unfortunate content creators who spotted that and made a video about it, and then two days ago, you get this censorship request from Sony, I would get the finger of blame pointed right at me because, hey, Jason, why did you say that for? You know, you've caused this complete and utter meltdown. Well, actually, folks, the censorship just goes beyond offensive graffiti. In fact, Kotaku and IGN have both been accused of orchestrating this hard R campaign to Sony to say, get that removed because you cannot have that in a Far East Asian video game. And again, I'm gonna say this much folks, Shift Up are not to blame for this. They looked at it and they probably thought, yeah, hard R, that looks really good. It's a post-apocalyptic world. Why wouldn't you have that? I've even seen black streamers online laughing at the fact that this is not even offensive. If they're not finding it offensive, why is anybody else? But again, you know, Kotaku, IGN, it's obviously the whiteies on the left-hand side who are obviously making a big fuss about nothing. It really is about nothing because all of us have played the demo and none of us actually noticed. Isn't it a shame now, folks, that when you do play a Far East Asian video game in future, you're going to be looking at graffiti, things in the background, a minuscule piece of writing that might be deemed offensive because Far East Asian culture doesn't know any better. It's awful. Fiona from Vindictus Defying Fate. Love, you can't let me down because you're my only hope left now when it comes to the male gaze, the heterosexual male gaze. But of course now, folks, I've got, and by the way, I will be doing a review for Stellar Blade. It just won't be a live stream because again, I've got these technical issues in my room but of course now if you want to see the latest of uh, this the, the cope with this is incredible actually grums once again doing a great job on twitter shift up replaces hard R with crime after journalists complain to sony so yeah i mean you can barely make out that says crime crime r shop again when i said before it's not just the graffiti that's being censored apparently these costumes are being censored which doesn't make any sense so during the pre-release play i repeatedly thought I can't believe SEI, that Sony Interactive Entertainment, gave the go-ahead. This is just the beginning of a godly game where you can experience the erotic pitifulness of a beautiful woman. And what is my guy talking about here? Well, Eve just happens to be one of her awesome outfits which is this lovely swimsuit right here, which should be in 4K resolution, but it's not. And it's very Uncharted too. She's running through a train. And uh, yeah, it's a bunny suit, actually. Oh, she fought, oh, oh d d d done for. This is straight out of Uncharted 2. So come on, shift up. I mean, I've got to give you a bit of a bollocking here. You could have made a bit more of an original game. I know you obviously love the Uncharted games and Western pop culture, but come on, man. This is just Nathan Drake in his swimsuit. And as, as nice as that image is to think about, I don't want to think about Nolan North wearing a green swimsuit or a bunny outfit. It's just going to give me weird dreams. And speaking of censorship, folks, can you imagine that Sony retcons the earlier Uncharted game where Sally Sullivan's most offensive line about bringing a hooker to church will eventually be removed. That's why I've got the physical editions of those great awesome games because they can't do jack shit. And again, I know a patch takes a while to roll out, but the problem is once it's been initiated, it's gonna happen. So this is disappointing already. I, I can't stand this. I really just hate all of this. Why should I actually give Sony... Well, I think Sony are a bunch of phonies anyway. I've said that for a very long time. Um, and it's just absolutely terrible. So I feel your pain there, my friend. What else is out there in the desert? Along with the gigantic eye, a massive nose. I know there's a pair of huge tits out there. So reports from New Game Plus players on Reddit, Twitter and streamers via 4chan confirm the swimsuit of Eve is altered even in New Game Plus. Physical disc versions seems to not have that problem at the moment. 
but I don't know. I think uh, that might change, actually. Reviewer copies in day one patch have this version. Oh, boy. Sorry, my... So, this guy's called Wapadaka. Uh, sorry, my English is not good. Don't apologize, dude. I want to say this is my new bunny for New Game Plus on Stellar Blade. It, too, is censored. Sorry, guys. This is the cruel reality. I like Stellar Blade so much, but now I feel betrayed. See? And the costumes Eve wears. I've seen the gameplay footage already. She wears glasses. She looks like Bayonetta. She wears a short denim mini skirt and it flies around the place. It, you know what? You know, we can't have the male gaze, folks. It's a biological, beautiful woman that we're playing as. But according to Western media, you can't have that anymore because apparently we've got 5,000 genders and you can't have male and female. So, yeah, my... <sighs> Stellar Blade is the is the character that catapulted my YouTube channel to over 8,000 subscribers today. It's just, it's um, it's heartbreaking. I feel I feel betrayed because I had so much faith in Shift Up, and I wish they would actually issue a statement about this. They signed a pact. They signed an agreement with Sony to have this game released on their platform. I do wonder if this was a cross-platform game, if Microsoft would then impose sanctions to censor the character design of Eve, because God, I'll be talking about Microsoft later on actually in this video. It's uh, it is a cruel reality. I just feel like something's been taken away from me, but Fiona from Vindictus Flying Fate, you are my last hope, my last bastion. Not bastion, as some weird pink headphone weirdos on live streams like to call the word to bastardize. <laughs> Ashley Cooper, not to be confused with the great Alice Cooper. She's poison running through my veins. Poison! Lots of right-wing folk are talking about Ashley Cooper. Who? Who? You'll soon find out. Uh, Fink Reese or P says, I've seen an article and a few posts where gatherings of alt-right dudes and chads have been shooting on Ashley Cooper. One of the writers for Space Marine 2. <laughs> She's a fantastic, he's a fantastic trends writer. He supports defunding the police because that makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? So, Mr. Cooper, when a burglar is at your front door and you want to call the police, and oopsie doopsie, that's the same branch or precinct of the police you've defunded. Who's going to help you? Not Ghostbusters, not your local neighborhood watch team. No, 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 no one's going to come and help your trans ass. Uh, but it's, yeah, so they're making they're making sure everybody knows that Warhammer is an inclusive hobby. Just thought I'd say A, C, A, B, and F the white Sith mouth assholes that make up conspiracy theories to justify their shitty ideals. Oh dear God, isn't it so funny? And you know, actually somebody said to me as well on one of my recent videos, in fact, actually it was the Stellar Blade Gets f video, where they said, listen, dude, you're gonna get a lot of subscribers but I hope you don't change your opinion. Well, I've got news for you. I, I, I won't. Uh, once I've come this far in my ideology and my thinking, I'm, there's no going back. I don't care if Sydney Sweeney standing right behind me with a big pair of titties saying, Jason, can you just become more lefty minded for my sake and we can have mixed race children together? As, as tempting as, as that, that is, is I gotta say no, no Sydney, no. So this is Ashley Cooper, who will convince you he's a biological female. Let's put it that way. Even more alarming in their LinkedIn profile. Once again, folks, do not go and hassle this gentleman right here. They're just doing their thing, what they want to do. I actually, I actually glad they're doing this stuff because it just gives us more reason to monetize off their content. They're one of the writers for the new Iron Man game for EA Games. I, I'm going to call it. I'm going to call it. It's, it's going to be Iron Trans Man. Trans Iron Man. Iron Man goes transatlantic. 
<laughs> Keep the puns coming in the comment section below, folks. Ashley Cooper is a game writer focused on creating complex, compelling characters, as well as the interplay between story and gameplay, with experience across various genres, including games like Jurassic Park Survival, Warhammer 40k Space Marine 2, Later Daters, Gotham Knights, and RuPaul's Drag Race Superstar. Ashley is a narrative chameleon. Well, you got that one right. Shaping his voice and narrative delivery dependent on the task at hand. He is currently a senior writer at EA Motive on Iron Trans Man. Wow, well done. you! Well done you, Ashley Cooper, for getting these awesome gigs. I think it's absolutely great. But of course, Titus from Space Marines 2, of course, if you get rid of the U and the S, it's Titus, is canonically transgender. Uh. He transitioned from male to alpha male. <laughs> okay, but then again, this could be the same Titus that might grow long hair and become an 80s rock singer and will scream about, I need a hero, I need a hero in the end of the night. So it's going to be interesting to see how Space Marine 2 will actually fare. I was excited for their game, now I'm not so sure. This is a gentleman called Jameson or Jameson Dural who interviewed Ashley Cooper, uh, and this was two years ago, and it's only had one like and 240 views. That's pretty awful. But here's a quick segment, and then you can hear what uh, Mr. Cooper sounds like. Not hanging with Mr. Cooper, a very great TV show back in the day. No, this is Ashley Cooper. Rules of the world, right? Like, here's here's the yep. things that, and it sounds like, and I've never heard this in f from someone who who's talking about film. I've only heard about the script, right? Or, you know, the things that people are working directly on. So there do, do TV shows and movies tend to have a Bible as well that helps people understand the state of the world? The TV shows always. Okay, interesting. Yeah, it's cool. the the world, the characters, the tone and atmosphere. It's very similar to a game Bible. Okay, uh, which I know now. Um, it. Well, to be fair, I mean Hollywood was around longer than the gaming was. So yes, of course, what they're talking about here, my understanding is, if it's probably uh, incorrect, maybe it's not, but. If he's well, Jameson's referring to a game or a, a film Bible, a Hollywood Bible, yeah, it's to do with the continuity of the characters. But then again, that to me sounds alarming because you know you've obviously got this back catalogue of uh, which they call the Bible uh, of a various universe. But I think in the implication here, and although this is a two years ago interview, the implication is well, Warhammer 40k, formed in 1987 has this law of characters, but we're going to go in there and tinker around with it just a little bit because you won't notice because you're the fan base who built us up and you're all dumb. And by the way, the chief financial officer, Rachel French Tongue, mm, she's actually sold all of her shares, hasn't she? She's getting out of the Warhammer 40K franchise because maybe Rachel Tongue knows something that we don't. So that's a bit ominous as well. Uh, of course now, folks, I have to end with this, which is, again, more sweet baby stink news. So Zao, uh, Tales of Ken Zira, uh, this is a game that does not appeal to me by any me, any stretch of the imagination. Now, I think these reviews here might be fake, or they could be real, actually. Uh, Jewel Shockers gave it, gave it a 9 out of 10, so the Destructoid, uh, again... Enemy for our well, enemies gone works for a long time now. Eurogamer four out of five. I mean, it's funny how they've kind of lowered that score so it, it meets the right metric. You know, it can't be four out of ten. It has to be like, let's make sure we mark our games out of five because then, you know, it gives a more uh, positive review, a glowing response to the game. So you've got all of that. And again, you know, Matthew Mercer as well. This guy who was the voice behind Dante and Devil May Cry. Now being able to spend a solid amount of time with this incredible game, I'm just overwhelmed with pride, the joy and excitement. And now he's uh, virtue signaling for a game that isn't made for me. 
I mean, you guys, you know, I'm going to get to that another point in a minute, actually. But Mighty Keith, now this guy stirred up a quite a bit of fuss two nights ago as well. Um, and he's a YouTuber and I've seen him on YouTube and he, he comes across all right, actually. He's got a nice personality, but then there's this other side to him now, which I'm just not quite sure what's going on. So Mighty Keith obviously is a black man. And now he's defending uh, Tales of Ken Zira. A black man made a game themed in his Kenyan culture. Well, nothing's wrong with that. And people in the comments are saying things like DEI. This is what I mean when I say people just say shit when they hear others say without having any idea about what that word means. I'm getting the same game just to spite these weirdos. Well, you waste your money, Mighty Keith. You're a big time YouTuber. You could probably get it for free. Me and the homies are on our way to support Tales of Kinzira, Zao, in spite of the anti-woke crowd. <laughs> and of course, yes, look at this TikTok here. Blue head weirdo in the background. And obviously there is just uh, relating to something else. It's not obviously not for the game. I doubt if these guys would even play Tales of Ken Zero. So in fact, on that part place.com, no real journalists, actually real game journos, they actually do the hard work for us content creators. So it's easier for us to dissect it all. So Sweet Baby Ink Boycott crushes Tales of Ken Zero Zao as games tell to concurrent players peaks at just 287 and there you go there's a screenshot as proof of the pudding that is yeah i mean people are still playing hell divers too and that's in the thousands this is just in the hundreds not only has the game only achieved a peak a uh, concurrent player count of 287, <laughs> should be 187 for different reasons, but SteamDB also notes that the game has only sold between 930 to 4,700 copies, albeit noting that the game released recently, estimations for game sales data takes days to accumulate, which is true, it does. Uh, and of course now this is even more egregious so master of the tds also spotted this here we go so master of the tds with the release of tales of kin zero a game known to have been worked on by sweet baby inc it's not surprising that the discussion of the game was met with controversy online what also isn't surprising is that a combination of blue check mark and non blue check marks bot accounts has also been released, potentially to run damage control for the game. Yes, Blossom. Wow, I had no idea Abubakar Salim founded Surgeon Studios. Can't wait to see what Tales of Kinzera has in store for us. Amber underscore 1995 wow obubakar salim is the voice of bayek that's so cool definitely can't wait to check out tales of kinzira and on and on it goes it's so bizarre that you've got these strange similarly worded responses in defense of the game it's I'm excited to see what kinzira brings great to hear that the talented developer behind it can't wait for the release date i'm just speed reading that on purpose and ladies and gentlemen mighty keith is an absolute buffoon because he says here these are the type of people using dei as a scapegoat to mask their racism for this individual he didn't even use a mask LOL, he's talking about Cabrutus. But what's very funny in the email as well, so Cabrutus basically retweeted Mighty Keith. Keith says here, this game is on Sweet Baby Inc. Detected curator page, and yeah, it is connected to Sweet Baby Inc. So this guy, Mighty Keith, who talks about the fact that people are being racist about a black game, because why on earth do you need DEI and ESG in a game or black culture you don't need it you can just make the game as is without interjecting those other nonsensical terms and of course we've got bridge coming up haven't we god can't wait for that one paris lily who's rather silly he works for or does things in conjunction with xbox and microsoft this is what paris yells when folks tell you that representation matters a game like tales of kenzira zao is exactly what we're talking about i am proud to see african culture handled with respect and care and hope as people play this game it inspires them to learn and want to see more wow thanks paris 
maybe just carry on making your own content and don't tell us what you think and feel because people like me won't come around to your way of thinking or change their minds about playing this awfully god-awful game. Yeah, it's funny that people keep virtue signaling for Tales of Kinzira because it's set in a Kenyan jungle and probably for a Kenyan demographic audience. But do you black folks sing the praises of Lincoln Clay from Mafia 3? He's a really good character. I've never been one to shy away from a calculated risk. But nobody ever talks about him because, oh no, it's made by a Western video game company, Hangar 13. It's in the 1960s America where everything was rife and horrible. But yet you had this Punisher-like, Frank Castle-like tank of a man just killing out Mafia members. It's absolutely hilarious. Is it a perfect game? Definitely not. Some of the gaming mechanics are pretty awful from time to time. Very frustrating how he gets killed off quickly, but it's probably my inept player's ability to not actually fully understand how to really get the best out of that character. But yeah, nobody talks about Lincoln Clay and I can't imagine why. Maybe it's just the kind of character that black people don't see as positive representation just going back to ashley cooper very quickly folks i mean this person has written so many other franchises why didn't warhammer enlist karen travis she's a person i've talked about before she's a she uh, an award winning new york times writer she's written a lot of the gears of war comics uh, she wrote gears of war 3 she's absolutely based as hell she's got a great understanding of writing machismo macho male characters you could have brought her in to write warhammer space marines 2 but now i've got reservations about that video game as well i was so excited for it i've got the first game and that's great that's a really good laugh but i don't think i'm yeah um my entertainment's being our entertainment ladies and gentlemen has been shot to shit here i've just oh i'm a broken man i, I really am but you know a pair of biological female tits always lifts my spirits up, folks, because as they should lift yours too. I know this video is overloaded today, folks. It really was. And uh, I'm going to go to the gym in a minute because I'm shooting this video today at 9.45 a.m. in the morning on a Friday. Well, that's the time I'm now concluding this video, but it'll be much later on when you see the finished product. And on that one... <laughs> Oh, I keep thinking about Eve from Stella Blade and those various outfits I've seen. They've been monumentally just, oh, I'm not even talking about the flesh colored one suit. There's just some other great designs out there and they're making my eyes go giggle goggle. And on that one, ladies and gentlemen, if I were you and if you were me, you should come back for the next video. That's it for this programme and for this series. Why don't you come to England, though, uh, this summer? Because all the birds have got great tits. Look at this. <laughs>